Hello, dear friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ilnara Kuldaeva, and I'm a watercolor artist. Today, I will be exploring unique properties of watercolor medium. Watercolor is versatile and dynamic medium that inspired so many artists over the years and helped them create stunning pieces of works. Today, I will be talking about watercolor transparency, opacity, granulation, and staining properties. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned artist, I hope this video will inspire you to explore all the amazing ways watercolor interacts with water, paper, and light. So let's dive in and explore the world of watercolors. First, I will talk about watercolor transparency. Here I use 100% cotton cold press paper, size 22 flat brush, and three transparent primary colors. Here you see me use porcelain plate as my palette. I find it easier to mix and lift paints from its smooth surface. Here I squeeze alizarin crimson, oriole in yellow, and thalo blue. I'm now ready to dab pre-wet flat brush onto my paints one by one and apply them onto my paper in form of strips. Once I finish applying the first layer, I made sure to dry the first layer with a hair dryer. Unlike other opaque mediums like oil or acrylic paint, watercolor is translucent, meaning that light can pass through paint layer and reflect off the paper surface below. When using watercolor, artists typically apply multiple layers of paint to build up the desired level of color and value. Let's move on to discussing watercolor opacity. Watercolor is primarily known for its transparency. However, it can also be made opaque through various methods. You can achieve opacity of watercolor by reducing the amount of water you use to dilute the pigment. There is a wide array of semi-opaque colors on the market. I find that in my paintings I only use a few, such as burnt umber, rose sienna, and French ultramarine. However, for this example, I chose three transparent colors, cobalt blue hue, permanent alizarin crimson, and oriole in yellow. My three semi-opaque colors are yellow ochre, vermilion hue, and lavender. To see the effect of opacity, I first layer transparent colors. You could see how I dab my pre-wet brush onto a pigment in order to load my brush once the brush is fully loaded, I slowly paint each color strip. If you are trying this at home, notice how beautiful water watercolors look like when the light from the paper is peeking through each transparent color. Once I'm done with the first layer and dry the paper thoroughly, I checked with back of my hand if the paper is still wet. If you sense the coolness, then the paper probably is still wet. Take your time and make sure the first layer is dry fully before you start applying the second layer. As I start to apply opaque colors, you could see how they tend to block the colors below. Opaque colors are good when used to add highlights, accents and details to paintings. However, one should use caution when using opaque colors and glazing or mixes with other colors, as the result could become muddy or dull. I also wanted to show you how opaque white gouache looks like on this color chart. Let's move on to discussing granulation. Granulation is a characteristic of certain pigments that when mixed with water results in a distinctive texture on watercolor paper. To show you the example of granulation, I chose the following pigments. Ultramarine Blue by Schminke, Lunar Blue and Moon Glow by Daniel Smith, Permanent Mauve by Windsor & Newton, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Azo Yellow and Undersea Green by Daniel Smith, and Sab Green by Windsor & Newton. Now I'm ready to activate colors. I simply wet my size 8 round brush and start dabbing it onto each pigment, making sure I wash the brush in between each color. If you have other granulating pigments on hand, feel free to do a similar exercise using your colors. Granulating effect is attractive to many watercolorists, as it can add depth, textures, and visual appeal to their paintings. 
I sometimes use granulating colors to depict foregrounds, textures on rocks, or when I want to describe moody atmospheres and sky. Sometimes it is possible to enhance granulating effects by using granulating medium, add acrylic inks onto wet washes, or by using rough or textured paper. Here you see how I pre-wet the paper, then load my brush with the pigment, tilt my paper about 30 degrees angle and let my pigments flow down while gently pressing on my brush to squeeze all paint onto the paper. You see how the water and pigments start to pool on the bottom? I simply dab a paper towel to soak in the excess. In this example, I use wet on wet effect when paper surface is first wetted with water, then paint is applied, letting pigments blend together, creating unique watercolor effects. I hope you find this experiment inspiring and you try a similar project at home. You may be surprised by visually captivating results. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up subscribe and share it with your friends who might be interested in learning watercolors. Now let's take a moment and observe how colors mingle together on the wet paper surface. Let me tell you which colors I used in each color strip. The first one has permanent mauve, sap green and undersea green. In the second, there are lunar blue and azo yellow. The third strip has ultramarine blue and burnt amber. And in the last color strip, I will use moon glow and permanent mauve. Let's move on to discussing another property of watercolors. It is called staining. The staining property of watercolors refers to how they adhere to paper surface. When a watercolor pigment has strong staining property, it means that it will create a permanent mark on the paper and resist lifting. Sometimes it is possible to leave staining colors, at least partially, especially when they are still wet. For this exercise, I chose three staining colors, which are placed on the right side of the plate. They are Indian Yellow, Windsor Blue Red Shade, and Permanent Alizarin Crimson. And on the left side of the plate, there are three non-staining colors, Windsor Yellow, Manganese Blue, and Rose Matter Genuine. In this example, I do not pre-wet the paper. I simply apply the loaded brush with the pigment onto the dry paper. This watercolor technique is also called wet and dry. In my works, I tend to use both staining and non-staining colors. Some artists use the staining property of watercolors to create different effects in their paintings. By layering multiple washes of highly staining pigments, they can create rich and deep colors that cannot be achieved with single wash. However, we must be very careful when applying staining colors because they are difficult to correct. On the other hand, pigments with weaker staining properties can be used to create delicate and soft washes that can be lifted or reworked with water for more subtle effects. To lift colors, 
You may use hard bristle brush or magic eraser or even an old toothbrush. Try this exercise at home and see the difference between staining and non-staining colors. This concludes the lesson on watercolor properties. I really enjoyed talking about watercolors today and showing you the examples. Please subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thank you and until next time.